RT's been speaking exclusively with the Venezuelan president. He told us that the opposition there has been attempting to undermine the socialist government for years. I think the opposition has been doing this for 18 years, first against Hugo Chavez and for the past four years against me. There's no other way to resolve conflicts in the country than through democracy and elections. In May, for three and a half weeks, I tried to establish direct dialogue with the opposition. I wanted to include them in parliament, but they refused. It's a period of political isolation. They've drifted into right-wing radicalism. They're imprisoned by a strategy of violence and ignoring those who voted for them. Venezuela is ready for any scenario. I think it's insane for the extreme right in the US to be talking of a blockade against Venezuela. In fact, they've already started an indirect blockade against our financial system. This was the cause of the crisis over the past three years. But we have economic strength, and Venezuela always pays what it owes and fulfills its responsibilities. In 2017, 2018 and 2019, our country will continue to fulfill them. The normally traffic-choked streets and highways of eastern Caracas were empty, except for makeshift roadblocks, as a 48-hour national strike called by opponents of Venezuela's government got underway. Blocking the roads is the only peaceful way we have of telling the government that we don't agree with what it's doing, that we are fed up. He's referring to the government's plan to elect a constitutional assembly on Sunday that would rewrite the constitution. While the first day of the strike didn't manage to paralyze the country, in Caracas and other cities, there was more bloodshed. At least two protesters were killed and scores injured in clashes with riot police. This man was hit by one of the glass projectiles used by security forces against demonstrators. Weighing in on the crisis, Washington said it was freezing the assets of another 13 high-ranking Venezuelan officials, adding that stronger measures will follow if Sunday's elections aren't called off. Although the latest U.S. sanctions only target individuals in the Venezuelan government and state apparatus, they are sure to further incense President Nicolas Maduro, who continues to claim that it's the CIA and the U.S. government that's behind more than 100 days of ongoing protests in this country. In fact, while the U.S. government was making the announcement, the president here was swearing in the candidates in defiance to the new Constitutional Assembly election. President Maduro then praised the 13 sanctioned officials, including the head of the police and the National Guard. Give this sword to you and to the National Guard for its absolute loyalty to the Bolivarian Revolution. Go into battle, into combat and into victory. It's a battle that's becoming more fierce by the hour, as opponents of the highly unpopular president vow to increase the pressure on the streets ahead of Sunday's electoral deadline. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Caracas. Clashes broke out in Venezuela today on the first day of a two-day strike. It's the latest in months of organized opposition protest against President Nicolás Maduro's plans to convene a constituent assembly. The government has to stop its plan for a constituent assembly. We are against it because it is illegal and fraudulent and the only thing it will bring is more problems to our country and worse conditions to all the workers. In the capital, Caracas buses are not running and blockades have made it impossible for cars to move inside most of the city. Barricades made from garbage, tree branches and furniture. Living in Venezuela is a daily challenge, because instead of thinking about going to the beach over the weekend, I must think about what will happen if someone close to me dies in the protest, and if I will have money to buy food or if I can even get food. The Constituent Assembly would be authorized to rewrite the Constitution, but opposition supporters say that's just a diversion from the real problems facing Venezuela. We need a channel of humanitarian aid since our patients are dying of the most basic diseases and we cannot treat them correctly due to the current crisis. President Nicolás Maduro says no matter how many people take part in protest against the election, he will move forward with his plans to create a constituent assembly, which for him 
will restore peace to Venezuela. And to complicate things even more, one of the last big carriers operating in Venezuela, Bianca, decided to uh, cut flights with, uh, from and to Venezuela, isolating the country even more. And this 48-hour general strike will continue on Thursday, followed by a planned opposition demonstration on Friday in the run up to the election scheduled for Sunday. Mike? Juan, as you all know, uh, just as the strike began, the U.S. slapped sanctions on Venezuelan officials. Is there any government reaction from that? And also, could these sanctions actually stop President Maduro from creating this new Congress? Well, President Nicolás Maduro called these U.S. sanctions as insolent, and in a symbolic act, he gave swords to these 13 uh, government officials sanctioned by the Venezuelan government, by the, by the United States, sorry. And uh, he says, even with or without these sanctions, he will move forward to create uh, this Congress. And he says that the United States should keep away from Venezuelan problems and start thinking to solve their own problems. Thank you.